Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another podcast episode. My name is Alicia Gogan, the host of the Globe Secrets Podcast, where I help you expand your mind, become more self-aware so that you can glow up into the best version of yourself. Hello, girlies and gents. If you are listening, I do know that there are guys who listen to my podcast, but it's mainly the girlies. What is up? How are we doing? So happy to be here once again. And honestly, I just want to say hi to anyone who is new because I'm looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the subscribers and there's some of y'all that are new. And also I just want to say thank you to everyone who's followed the podcast Instagram page. I've been having fun with posting on there. And if you aren't following, then definitely follow. And one last thing for anyone who's only found my podcast on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to your podcast, just know I do have a YouTube channel where you can see me and you can hear me if you prefer that. Sometimes I like to listen to my podcasts on the TV and just like have it play in the background. But I do like to see that visual. I just like to see someone, even though I'm not really doing much. But I don't know. I think podcasting in terms of visuals has, have been such a huge thing in the past, like, I don't know, two to three, maybe four years instead of just li- listening audio. And I like to have options. We love options over here. All right. So we need to get into part three of our summer glow up series. Now, I love talking about this topic. I love talking about your mindset. I mean, majority of my content is all about your mindset. And when it comes to glowing up into the best version of yourself, it is so important that you recognize the mental diet that you have, or maybe you don't have. And I want to use diet loosely here because don't love the term diet because it's giving restriction. It's giving, you know, um, too much discipline, things like that. And, you know, we're, we're all about balance here on the channel. We don't like to be super perfect about everything because it's literally an illusion. But for this case, we will talk about your mental diet. We'll use the word diet. And, you know, it's I actually went on um, Pinterest because I am a Pinterest girly. And guys, can we just I don't know about you. I know some of you guys are way too young for this. But when I was younger, Tumblr was the Pinterest of the world. Okay, and so now that I'm on Pinterest, I just feel like this nostalgia in a way. But it's so interesting because I witnessed myself the other day thinking, you know, okay, Pinterest kind of reminds me of my Tumblr days. And honestly, my Tumblr days weren't really healthy. I was super obsessed with perfectly curated photos of people and their bodies, their lifestyles, like this unattainable, like I don't even want to say unattainable, actually, because I do think that my Tumblr era really was me envisioning who I wanted to become and I actually became that person but um, it also became very toxic in a way too but I look at the way that I spend time on Pinterest which is way less than I ever did with Tumblr like I would spend hours after school on Tumblr I would say up until like 3 a.m scrolling on Tumblr and like making my whole blog and stuff oh my god I was obsessed Um, I don't spend that much time on Pinterest anymore like that because I have an an internal dialogue, which we will get into, um, kind of like witnessing when I'm consuming a little bit too much and I know when to pull back. I also tap into my feelings and when I feel like, okay, you know, the the photos that I'm looking at no longer are inspiring me. They're kind of making me feel like crap about my life. Like that's when I kind of pull back. But anyways, I still love Pinterest and I came across this quote and I'm going to read it quickly. I feel like a lot of you guys probably have already heard this. It's very quick. I don't know who it's from, but it was on Pinterest and it says, Your diet is not only what you eat, it's what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, the people you hang around. So be mindful of the things that you put into your body emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And then I just want to add here and say, your mental diet, it's really the stories that you're telling yourself. It's the identity that you're in. It's where you spend your time. Are you investing in yourself? Things like that. And I can recall when I was in grade 12, I believe, I remember in class, this one teacher showed us this TED talk of this guy talking about something. I don't know what it was. I don't even know what class it was for. But I remember for the first time I was like, whoa, I really like what this guy is saying on this TED talk stage right now. It was giving like personal development. It was like opening up my mind to something that I've never heard about. I came from a very small town. So, you know, and even the internet back then, it wasn't, um, I didn't spend time on the internet going into these like self-help niches and like looking at videos and courses and doing all these things. So I remember when I first got exposed to a TED talk for the first time and I was like, oh my gosh, this is very 
this is very interesting. I'm learning something about myself, about the world here. And I remember I went back home and I typed in on YouTube, my little like iPhone freaking four. I don't know. At this point, I was so young, like grade 12. I don't even know how old I was around like 16 and 17 years old is when I really had this first kind of like spiritual awakening, I guess. And I've talked about this in one of my videos, which I will talk about um, later in this video, but I, um, well, actually my father had passed away right before I was 16 years old. So I feel like his passing really flipped a switch for me. And, um, I started to become very awakened to things in my life. And, and, and when he passed away, I really had this drive within myself to do better in my life and to change and evolve and grow. And I think naturally though, at that age, you're transitioning and you kind of want to do better and glow up and all these things. So I don't know. All around that time, I watched a TED Talk, went home, Googled more TED Talks, and that was literally like the beginning of what I would like to call my own mental diet. I became so fascinated and intrigued by all the information that I was learning online. I couldn't even believe how much uh, information was online about how to become a better version of you, what it means to be happy, what it means to be joyful, what it means to create a life that is very meaningful, how to break through cycles, how to get what you want in your life, how to make money, like literally anything. I was so obsessed and I loved it. I love the way that this content made me feel. And even on top of that, although... (laughs) you know, my Tumblr obsession was a little bit too much. I loved spending time on Tumblr because it was like this portal into this world in which I, I saw that everything was possible. I saw the houses. I saw the life outside of what I was given. I saw the money. I saw people in good health. I saw so many things that I was not seeing around in my reality. And I really, really loved that. And, you know, like I said, part of that was kind of an escape, but it was also kind of a healthy escape in a way because I was very focused. I learned so much and I started to recognize when certain content or certain topics, when they made me feel good or when they made me feel bad, like I started realizing, okay, well, I actually rather spend time after school going to watch a TED talk on my freaking iPhone in my room instead of spending time with my friends who, you know, love them great, whatever, but uh, we're gossiping or we're worrying about boys who aren't texting us back. I started to realize that there were certain things that no longer served me. I started to realize that these things were also not getting me to where I wanted and I realized that the life on Tumblr that 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 picture perfect but not really perfect that life was going to be attainable only if I had a certain mental diet, meaning watching the TED Talks, meaning watching people on YouTube that's teaching me about health and wellness and mental health and everything. And the more times that I dove into these topics and I spent my time really saturating my mind with this, I found myself slowly, I took a lot of tumbles, Okay, but slowly I was getting closer to that dream life. Now, my issue was in between me and who I wanted to become was a lot of insecurities. There was a lot of systems that I tried to put in place that were not necessarily the healthiest. I was driven a lot by my ego. And those are things that I had to constantly heal from and move through and realize a lot of the things that I was consuming maybe was not the healthiest and continue to self-correct. But still, no matter what, I've always been on on this energy of like, okay, what's my mental diet? Like, what am I putting my time and my energy into? And anyone who knows me knows I am always spending my time educating myself. I'm always listening to podcasts. I'm always reading books. I'm always doing the work. I'm going deeper. I've always been like that because from a very young age, I just realized the benefits of what my mental diet and where I put my time and my energy, where that will lead me. And a lot of you guys ask me what books you listen to, what podcasts you listen to. How did you get to where you're at? Like, how are you so enlightened? How are you so wise? How are you so smart? X, Y, and Z. And by the way, I'm not like boosting myself. Like I know not maybe everyone thinks that I am, but I know a lot of you guys compliment me on that, which is so amazing. And I love that, but it's because I have this mental diet. So I want to give you guys some tips on how to have a better mental diet based off of what I have done in the past. Now, I recently just posted a video on my YouTube channel that you guys seem to have really enjoyed. And if you haven't watched that, you can totally go. I'll definitely link that down below. And the title is your story is keeping you stuck. And I think the first thing when it comes to having a better mental diet is realizing how your current story about money, about love, about the world, about yourself, how this story or how you view the world is keeping you stuck. Realistically, and some people are not going to want to like be ready to hear this, but you are the one that's getting in your own way. Your story 
is keeping you stuck. And I'll bring it back to, you know, who I was when I was 16, 17 years old. I started to realize that me focusing on the fact that we didn't have a lot of money, me focusing on the fact that my dad passed away and I don't have a father anymore and I have to do this, that, and the third and all the ways in which my life is going to be hard, all everything. I realized that that story and that narrative wasn't getting me anywhere good. And on top of that, it didn't make me feel good. Me thinking about how I'm not going to have my dad for here, there and everywhere. Of course, very sad. We had to like mourn that loss. Of course, we want to let ourselves do that. But in general, I was like, I don't want to choose the victim mentality. And listen, there are definitely um, circumstances in which you are very much so allowed to be a victim. You are a victim. There's so many people that are victims. Like this is not to say that I wasn't necessarily a victim of the fact that like I don't have a father anymore. Like I had to mourn that loss. I had to really um, go through that time. But at the end of the day, I just realized that, you know, if I wanted this life of happiness and joy and financial security and health and good relationships, it wasn't going to be from this story of this lack, this victim story. And that took me many years, right? You have so many stories that you tell yourself through different phases of your life as well. So like, yeah, for for me, one of the stories was losing my father and how I had to go through that and had to change that story around what that means for my life. But also there's many times in which I was struggling financially and I was in the scarcity mindset and it's normal to be in that. It's normal to be in fight or flight when you literally don't know like when your next paycheck is coming in or like where it's coming or you're not making enough money like life is stressful but I started to realize that me complaining about the fact that I don't have money stressing and always bringing up the negative around my mother or my friends um, always talking about how everything is so hard that was never getting me where I wanted to go even when it comes to thinking about my health conditions I've had many chronic health conditions before in my life. And we can go into a whole other topic and I'm pretty sure I already have an episode on this, but um, this is more so my beliefs and stuff. And I don't, I don't want to like get too much into it, but the way in which I always overcame my health issues was from a place of empowerment and this creator mindset and being very optimistic, positive, and grateful. It was never from dwelling, stressing, obsessing, being afraid. This is not to mean that I wasn't afraid when I had a hyperactive thyroid and I lost literally like all of my weight. I was like 90 pounds. Or when I got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and my doctors are basically saying like, okay, well, medication can help, but you're going to be on it for the rest of your life. And all of the stress and fear and pain, literally so much pain I went through in that time. Or My hand pain that I had for damn near almost two years where I went to every single doctor. I did every single test. I literally did cortisone shots. I was going to get a hand surgery. I literally did everything. I did freaking ketamine shots. They sent me to a clinic to do that. And I was like, what the heck's going on? All of that. I've literally gone through so much of that stuff. And the way I got out of every single one of those things and even like the many things that I've gone through, like depression and all that kind of stuff, it was always from a place of me deciding, you know what? I no longer want this to be my story right now. It is not to say that I don't have this sickness or I don't have X, Y, and Z. We don't. We can acknowledge the fact that our circumstances may be not exactly where we want, but that doesn't mean that we're going to use this story or this circumstance as a way to continue to disempower ourselves because how the hell are we going to get what we want if we're always focusing on what we don't have? It makes no sense. So what I started to do was focus on the positive, focus on the things that do make me feel good, continue to search, not to give up on yourself. That's another thing, right? And I get it. When you're going through something very, very tough in your life, it's like, and especially when you've gone through every option, you think that you've actually gone through every option. You kind of just want to give up on yourself, but you cannot give up. And in my mind, I remember when I had this switch when I was like 16, 17 years old, don't really remember what age I'm 27, by the way, but I just remember thinking to myself, there is no option to fail. There is no option to fall back. There is no way in hell that I am going to put my hands up and let it go. Maybe I'm going to need to like mourn a loss or I'm going to need to cry or I'm going to need to sit in my feelings, which is so beneficial. We're going to talk about that in next week's episode, our emotional health. But at the end of the day, there is no other option but going up. And I always think about this when it comes to a job. I know not everyone is like this, but for me, 
there's never an option for me not to go into work. Like when I actually went in and actually worked for somebody, even now, of course, I do this with my own business, but every job that I've always had, there wasn't an option of like, am I going to go into work today or not? You just go. And the consequences of you not going to work is like you lose your job, you don't have money, and then you're not going to be sustained and this, that, and the third. So like, obviously you need to remind yourself of that. But in my head, it's always been ingrained in me. And this is something that I'll take from my father. Um, Although he was (laughs) very hard on me and way too strict and disciplined. And sometimes, of course, there's always a positive light with everyone, every parent, every situation. And he very much so distilled a lot of discipline in me from the sense of being like, you just show up. Like there's no option but to not go into work. Like, what do you mean you're not going to go into work today? And that's how I look at everything in my life. Like, okay, it might be like crappy right now, but, and I might feel like I have no answers to get out of this hand pain or, you know, to get out of this financial situation, but I'm going to. There's always going to be a way. I'm going to find a way. But if you don't tell yourself that, then you will be stuck. And that's why it's so important for you to really start to recognize and think about the stories that you're telling yourself when it comes to love, when it comes to money, when it comes to success. You have to be that creator. You need to be more optimistic. There should only be one option and that option is up. You need to start telling yourself that things are figure outable. You need to tell yourself that something will change. And this is something that my mom used to always tell me when I used to stress about absolutely everything when it came to money, situations, things that I literally didn't need to be stressing about. And um, partly actually, you know what? I did live a very stressful life, but there was way more things that I exacerbated as well. And she would always tell me, and I would never want to hear it because I was so stressed out that I just like couldn't really receive the information for many reasons, for, especially from her, but she wasn't wrong. And she's always been somebody who would say like, things are always going to work out. Eventually something's going to turn around. We're going to find the answer. You got to just keep being positive about that. You have to trust that something is going to change. And realistically, That is how you are going to find the answer. Something's going to come to you. And I think back to my hand pain. I realized, you know, me being in this victim mentality, me thinking that there's no hope and me thinking that I've lost my whole entire future because I have nerve pain in my hands and I'm never going to be able to use my hands the way that I wanted to. I wasn't taking actions that would lead me to find an answer to help me heal. When I was thinking that my future is doomed and that I can't have what I want on my life, I would wake up in the morning and only focus on my hand pain. I would only stress about more things. I would only cry myself to sleep until I decided to make that switch. And when I started to make that switch of being like, something's going to change. I don't know what it's going to be, but something is going to change. This is not going to be like this forever. This is insane for me to think that my whole future is going to be wiped away because I have some illness or something. People change all the time. Things change all the time. People heal all the time. People become successful all the time. When I started telling myself those stories, guess what I would do? I would wake up in the morning and I would ask myself, what would somebody who loves themselves do? What would somebody who is in that optimistic creator mindset do? Well, she would do a guided meditation to calm her nervous system, to help her ease her pain. And she would get up, she would move her body. She would go on a walk. She would listen to a podcast that would get her in the right mind frame. She would continue to create this life in this environment and have this mental diet to keep her straight until something changed and something will inevitably change. And guess what happened? I remember when I started listening to podcasts, I found this one podcaster that was interviewing this psychologist that was specializing in chronic pain. And then I went down a huge rabbit hole of uh, researching what chronic pain even means and where that starts and the mind body connection. And then I found another podcaster, Nicole Sachs, the cure for chronic pain. She has a very good podcast, by the way, if you want to listen to that, if you struggle with any literally any health issue, just go there. And she talked even more about the mind body connection and how you literally suppress emotions within your body and your body speaks to you, not just on a physical level. And that led me down a huge path of trying to understand the nervous system. I literally studied the nervous system. I studied stress more than I ever have in my life. I studied more psychology, literally understanding more about inner child work, parts work, IFS, which is like the same thing. I learned how to speak to myself kinder. I learned how to let go, to forgive to move on. I learned all about feminine energy, masculine energy. I learned everything about getting on the scarcity mindset and becoming more optimistic. I literally learned everything 
by simply changing my mindset and telling myself I am no longer waking up today as a victim. And was every day easy? No, I still had pain through a lot of those days until slowly my nerve pain went away because I was resetting my nervous system. I was healing. I healed myself, but I was not able to heal myself with being in the story of being the victim. And this really does lead into deciding. You need to decide what you want to happen in your life. You need to decide what you want to believe. You need to decide how you want to think. You need to decide what happens in your life. And listen, through all of these situations that I've been in, through being the victim and changing my mindset to the creator mindset and taking control over my life, taking responsibility, taking accountability, I realized that you can really decide whatever you want to believe in your life. If you want to believe in the law of attraction, law of assumption, if you want to believe in God, you, you have a certain religion, if you want to believe that the world is working against you and not for you, whatever it is, you will have that be your reality. Your reality will start to conform and things will happen based off of what you decide. I have had so many different belief systems. I have had so many different worldviews. And what I've realized is there's not really a right or wrong. I mean, obviously there's like some rights and some wrongs, but at the end of the day, like there are so many people that think so many, okay, you know what? Let me give you a quick example. There are a million people who are successful. They all have gotten successful in different ways. There are people who've gotten successful by working super, super, super hard and grinding themselves down to the freaking abyss and they are very unhealthy and they've lost a lot, but they are very successful. There's also people who are very, very successful and they've worked smart, not hard. They actually have very balanced lives. They have proper systems in place. They've yielded a lot of results without putting in, let's say, what society would say as hard work. They're both successful, but the way they did it was two completely different ways. So what story do you want to persist in? What story do you want to tell yourself? And it better be a good one because your story really dictates your actions, really dictates what you keep attracting in your life. So pick a story that serves you. For you to tell yourself, all men are trash. There's no good guys out there. I don't get what I want. It's going to be so hard to make money. I can't do it. That will be your reality versus telling yourself a story. Okay, maybe there are some men out there that are not the best, but there are always good men. Like I even think about it when it comes to, let's say like athletes and rappers. I think in my head, rappers are a little bit like, I don't know about that one, but you know what? That's just my own limiting belief, really. A lot of people think that athletes, rappers, they're all cheaters. They all have money and this, that, but the reality is, like the actual true reality is, there are cheaters and there are crappy people in every industry. It does not matter which one. Or even when it comes to like rich men, not every single rich man is a bad man. But if you keep persisting in that story, that will absolutely be your reality. You will continue to seek out the men who are fitting your narrative. You will continue to attract the men who, yes, have those traits because you don't know anything different. You don't know how to recognize a healthy man. You don't know how to recognize a generous man. You don't know how to look for a guy who is actually successful and treat you well. And realistically, usually that is your low self-worth because you actually don't think that you're worthy of finding a man who actually is successful and treats you well. But also it's probably a little bit hard for you to even see that because you just never were really around that. So you really need to start to think about the stories that you're telling yourself and asking yourself, is this the full picture? Is this really true? Is every rich person in the world evil? No. Does every person who ends up getting an illness stay ill for the rest of their lives? No. Does every person who struggles with unhealthy eating or being in cycles or being addicted to something stay like that? No. But you are only focusing on the people who are like that. And if you continue to focus on the people who are like that, that will become your reality. Trust me, I have done it. So it's time for you to become that creator, to become the optimistic person, to decide to choose a better story, to decide to put your energy and your focus in something that makes you feel good. Because think about this too. Does thinking that all men are trash really make you feel good? Does thinking about never being able to get out of an illness make you feel good? Does thinking about always being poor make you feel good? No. So why even do it? What is the point? And this is what I say too, right? It's like, okay, there's going to be um, lots of thoughts that come up in your head about when you try and persist into a new story and you tell yourself a new story. It's going to be like, well, first of all, you're going to have limiting beliefs like, oh, I can't have that. Or no, this is not this, that, and the third, whatever. But a part of you is going to feel a little bit delusional for thinking about some of these things sometimes. But it's like, okay, who cares if you're delusional? I'd rather be delusional, which is 
honestly, to me, there is no such thing as actually being delusional because you can persist in any reality. Uh, anything can be possible, seriously, but that's also another belief. But realistically, I'd rather just be delusional than to be unhappy, to be stressed out. Like, think about it. I'd rather just persist in a story in which there are men out there that are great, who are successful and who are going to take care of me or who are going to love me or going to who whatever it is that I want or you want versus telling myself that there's not going to be a man out there for me. Like, how how does that help me in any way, shape or form? It doesn't. You need to see how your stories are keeping you stuck. And I think a good little practice you can do is to sit down and really ask yourself, what do you want your life to look like when it comes to your relationships, your dream relationship, your dream career, um, your money, your health, your whatever. You need to start focusing on your future self. Stop focusing on the problems, okay? The focusing on the problems are not going to get to the solution. I promise you that. You need to work backwards. Focus on your future and then take the steps on how it is you're going to get to that thing and ignore the rest. And when I mean ignore the rest, obviously I get it. You're going to have to, let's say you have a health issue. Yes. Maybe you're still going to keep going to the doctors and um, trying to find answers and that's fine. You can still do that from a very optimistic place. I did that myself. And there's obviously a difference between you just ignoring and suppressing your current reality and not addressing things and like um, running away from them or avoiding them or disassociating and like not going to the doctor and <laughs> working on your health issues or whatever versus recognizing that something is wrong and you being proactive and you deciding, okay, you know what? Yep. This is a challenge right now. This is not going to defeat me. I'm not going to be in this mindset of like, I'm the victim and that there's no answers. Even if I don't have the answers right now, I'm going to continue to find them. I'm going to show up for myself. I'm going to commit to this. I am not going to give up on myself. That is the thing that I want you to just ingrain in your head from here on. Now you do not give up on yourself. Ever. I do not care if you have the worst day and you're crying all day and like, you know, you didn't do anything and, and your stories are crap. That's fine. I have those. I have those days. That's fine. But at the end of the day, the core of my being is I am not giving up, though. I'm going to cry today. I'm going to feel like my life is falling apart. I'm going to feel like everyone is against me. I'm going to feel like the universe is not working for me. I'm going to X, Y, and Z. I'll be that victim today. I don't care. By the end of the day, I'm not giving up on myself though. And I want you to have that mindset because the moment you don't have that mindset, the moment you lose, you lose and you don't need to lose. So after you have witnessed and you have analyzed the stories that you tell yourself and you recognize how these stories are most likely getting in your own way, AKA you are getting in your own way. And from that, you have decided that you no longer want to be in this energy. You don't want to be in the story anymore. You are going to have to fully commit to becoming a new version of you, AKA doing the work, because this is the thing. It is all fine and dandy that you listen to this episode right now where I'm telling you that you need to be more optimistic, getting out of the victim mentality. You get to decide what happens in your life, X, Y, and Z. But this is the thing you have to actually really understand about changing is you have so many years in which you have perpetuated a certain narrative about relationships, money, yourself, everything, right? And on top of that, you've had experiences over and over and over again cycles, patterns that you have been manifesting from that state. So not only do you have that mindset ingrained, you also now have a library of evidence. And so when you want to start thinking a new story about men or money or yourself, you're going to naturally have these old stories come back up of no, actually all men are trash. And then remember, see that guy that I talked to or that guy that did me wrong or this toxic person or see how my friend's talking to this guy and see this, that, and the third, you're going to find evidence. But you have this is what you have to understand about finding evidence. We as human beings, we are wired to be safe. So we like to search for evidence to confirm to us that we are safe. So if I've experienced a trash situation with a man before, and I'm trying to persist in a new story about how men are not trash because this is new for me, because my body and my mind are literally like, this is new territory. What am I supposed to do here? I don't even believe this is possible. I need to feel safe right now. This is not safe for me. What I'm going to do is to look for evidence to remind myself that I am safe and how I'm going to feel safe is familiarity. It's familiar 
to look at men like they are all trash. It's familiar to go back to that ex. It's familiar to feel like crap in relationships. It's familiar to keep perpetuating a story of, I don't have enough money. It is a normal state of being that you've always been in and you wanna naturally go back into that because it's comfortable. That's where you feel safe. But the thing is, is it's all an illusion. And you have to honor yourself, that part of you that does wanna go back into that comfort zone, right? Because all your all that part of you is trying to do is keep you safe and it's understandable but this part of you doesn't actually understand that you going back into your comfort zone and perpetuating the story actually doesn't keep you safe anymore it just doesn't realize that so it's so important that you really witness when you have that part of you that wants to go back into the old self-sabotaging behavior or the old story or whatever and realize in that moment I get that we want to go back here but it's no longer serving us anymore and I don't need to. And you know what? Me persisting in a new story about how men aren't actually trash is actually very healthy for me. And this is what I always remind myself when my when I realize like I'm wanting to go back into an old story. You have to like bring some logic into this for a second. Like think about it. Is it really normal for you to persist in a story that men are all trash and that you're just like not going to have a healthy relationship or you're not going to have money or success or um, you're not going to like be happy in your life? Like what? You came here to be unhappy, to be sick, to be depressed, to be the victim? That makes no sense. Come on. Think about it for a second. That does not make sense that you're going to come to this world to suffer, to completely suffer and to be into pain. But listen, if you're in that victim mentality, then that's what you believe, right? And I get it, but that is not where we are going. So I say all that to say, it is going to be a daily practice for you to start to change the narratives in the stories that you are telling yourself. It is so important for you to witness when old thoughts or limiting beliefs are coming up and for you to give yourself a new story. This is not going to be some easy thing. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I don't want to say that because it's kind of like a limiting belief and I don't want you to feel like it's going to be super hard because it actually doesn't need to be. But this just, what I'm saying is you have to commit to doing this work, okay? This is going to be an everyday thing. And bringing it back to what I just said, people are going to listen to this episode and be like, oh my gosh, yes, this is great. Like I got to get out of the victim mentality, da, da, da. But then right after you're done listening to this podcast, I will guarantee you, you will have some story in your head about whatever it is that you, that's going on in your life right now. That's from that. That's really a manifestation from that victim mentality, scarcity, low insecurity, whatever it is, because it's so automatic. You've been running on these stories for so long. So it's going to be really important for you to have some structure, to have some things in place that really help you become a new version of you. And this is why having a mental diet is so important. So I'm going to list a few things that can be very helpful for you and things that I have done (laughs) literally since I've been like 16 years old to help me stay focused, to help me have a good mental diet so that I can get what I want in my life. So the first thing, and I really, really do this heavily when I'm really trying to change a a new story about um, love or money or success. And for the most part, I'm doing this often, but this is especially important for me to do when I am trying to up level my life or work past a fear or um, like manifest or like get something into my life that I haven't, you know, gotten in a while or whatever. And that is to do a daily journal practice. And I think there's three things that are very important when it comes to changing your identity, changing your story about something, changing your self-concept, they're all kind of in the same realm. One is to do a gratitude list. So I think gratitude lists are very good because it helps you not focus so much on the negative circumstance at hand. And like like we've already said, that you focusing on what you don't have is not going to help you get to where you need to be. So writing out the things that you are grateful for, whether that is your health, your beauty, your success, the things that you do have in your life, the money that is coming to you right now, all the resources that you have for free that you can go online and get, like any anything or everything and try to have that correlate with what you're trying to manifest or what you're trying to, you know, up level your life in. Like I remember when I wanted to have healthier teeth and healthier hair and a healthier body, I made sure that I was being grateful for my teeth for my body, for my hair, even when I didn't really love all of those aspects of me. The next part is really important. And I think that if you're not going to do anything, then at least do this, which is more like, and I don't know why I'm calling it this recently. Maybe I'll change it to a different name, but self-concept journaling. And this just helps you bring your focus to where you want to be instead of, again, focusing on the negative circumstances. This is really just helping you be in that creator, that optimistic mindset. So thinking about your future self when it comes to the relationships, your career, your life, like your everything. Writing out in your journal, who am I? How much money do I have? Where do I live? 
How does my relationship look? And then you write from that standpoint. I am an amazing mother. I have a great relationship with my husband. I am a successful content creator. I am loving what I'm doing. I am helping others, like whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to be, writing from that standpoint. And the third thing, and I think that's really helpful to do this after you do the self-concept journaling, is to do some affirmations because what's gonna happen sometimes when you do self-concept journaling, AKA journaling from your highest self, is you'll probably have some sort of learning beliefs or um, doubts that come up, like naturally that's what just will happen. You'll be like, oh, but like, will I be a wife or whatever it is, right? So reaffirming to yourself, like you are deserving of having that life and why you're deserving of having that life. Of course you're deserving of having that life. Look at the ways that you are so amazing. Look at all the things that you've done. Look at how much of a good person you are. You are affirming to yourself as to why you deserve to have this and why you get to have this. You need to be the one to tell yourself that. So doing the gratitude, doing the self-concept and affirming to yourself why in which you can get what you want in your life is gonna be so helpful. And during the day when you aren't doing your journaling, because in the morning it'll feel really nice and then you'll go out into the world and then you know something might trigger you or some story might come into your head. I find what's helpful is for me to verbally, either like in my head saying it or out loud, depending on where you are, something like I'm unscribing to this thought pattern or I'm unscribing to this story that I'm telling myself right now. Like literally enter your unsubscribing era, unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe freaking subscribe. And this leads into the next thing, which is unfollowing and unsubscribing from content that is pushing a story or a narrative that does not actually align with who you actually want to become. And I have gone down many rabbit holes. Like I've said, in the internet has been so great for me, but in a lot of ways I have deviated a lot of the times and that's normal. You kind of like fall uphill sometimes and you get into these pockets of the internet where they're perpetuating a story. And this is all a learning process and things like that but I started to realize like certain narratives that were being pushed online I no longer really felt like that that was helping me and if anything it was making me feel like crap about myself and it was perpetuating a negative story so you really want to think about the content creators that you're watching or the news that you consume or people who you follow what is the mindset that these people have and what are the beliefs that they hold and are those beliefs and stories really getting them where they want to be but also you because I I remember the times where I was always following these Instagram, um, I don't know, like Instagram pages and even online certain YouTube videos or YouTubers, podcasters as well, where they're pushing the story of um, like high value women and only caring about certain men that have like status and money and learning how to play the game better than men, perpetuating a story that men are all trash, Um, even like the red pill community, like all those types of like niches and pockets of the internet, I at one point absolutely fell into. Now, I will say there are there's definitely lessons and things that I still resonate with in certain communities, but I am the way that I would spend my time really taking it all in. I realized "Mm, this is too much. It's not making me feel the absolute best. And I have to always bring myself back to this. I get to decide what I want in my life. And I think something that's helped me be able to navigate consuming content on the Internet is also just, again, reminding myself like, Anything can be true. I can be a part of the red pill community. I can be a freaking liberal. I can be a conservative. I can think this about men. I can think that about men. I can literally think that I can manifest things or uh, be a realist and be super realistic. Like literally there's a million ways in which that you can get what you want in your life. So pick which one makes you feel good. And so I no longer consume things that don't make me feel good. But now that I am very aware of what I put into my mind, I will still watch uh, reality TV sometimes or I will listen to somebody who's a little bit more conservative and, you know, like not everything I fully believe in. And that's fine because I have critical thinking skills or like, I don't know, maybe something that's a little bit more negative on the Internet, but it just kind of like gives you that little fix that you need. Like it's totally fine for you to just you know, listen to the gossip for once or, you know, hear the drama or the tea that's happening on online, but it's when it's constant, right? And for me, I consciously know when I am choosing to tap in or tap out or subscribe or unsubscribe to things. So don't think that you have to be perfect with everything because I think that sometimes when you go on a self-development journey, you're like, okay, I'm going to cut out every toxic thing and I'm going to cut out friends and family and content and everything. And then it's like you live in this bubble and nobody's there with you and you're feeling a little bit lost and then you end up turning on the community or turning on the thing that you were once really interested in. So just 
be okay with like balance in a way. But again, at the end of the day, it's like, you really do have to start unsubscribing to things that make you feel good. Another thing that I wrote here is stop gossiping and persisting in old stories, especially when it comes to talking to your friends or your family. There has been so many times where I do not make it easy for myself when I am perpetuating the story of like analyzing someone's behavior or to keep talking about the same situation over and over again. Of course, it's nice to do that. And sometimes you need to let things out and like whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to realize that your words and your stories are dictating everything in your life. So okay, you want to analyze your boyfriend acting like an idiot or like this guy or like this freaking girl or whatever. You can do that, but like you need to realize when these stories are no longer serving you. You need to realize when your time is up. And what I like to do is to verbally tell my friends that I'm no longer going to be analyzing a certain situation anymore or I'm no longer going to be talking about this thing because it just doesn't help me in that, in that way. Another thing that's been really helpful when it comes to my own mental diet is reminding myself that there's always going to be an endless amount of books, podcasts, content on the internet, things to take, courses to take, everything. And so I don't need to continue to keep up. I need to be somewhat focused and on the right direction. So for me, like if I'm really interested in this one, let's say I'm learning about the nervous system or healing work. Oh, I mean, that's actually a pretty big umbrella term, but inner child healing, then I'm going to like watch a lot of videos, podcasts, read books about that thing. And until I really understand that thing to as much as I think that I can, then I will go to another topic, let's say health and wellness. Same thing when it comes to goals. You can't really just address every single thing all at once, like your love life and your money and your friendships and your family and your health, like everything, right? You kind of need to start at one thing and have that focus, like dial it in. It's like, okay, I'm really going to understand my story about love. I'm going to understand my patterns. I'm going to understand where I'm operating out of, and I'm going to actively change the stories that I tell myself every single day. I'm going to put myself out there more. I'm going to change the way that I show up in relationships. Like your, your, your focus is mainly on that. And then, yeah, when you have some time, you're going to be working more on your friend chips or your money or whatever, that's fine. But you kind of want to have something to kind of stay focused on. And I find this generation, there's endless amounts of things that you can consume and learn. And that's fine. But tell yourself there's no rush. And that's what I tell myself. Like there's so many projects that I want to do guys. There's so many things that I want to create. There's so many topics that I want to talk about every single week on the freaking podcast or um, YouTube video ideas. And I just tell myself like, I'm not going to be able to get to everything. It's totally fine. There's going to be endless amounts of opportunities for me to come back and talk about it. There's going to be different seasons, years of my life that I can go through this. I don't need to get it all done at once. And that's literally just not how life works anyways. Another thing that it's very important and I've always done this and I don't really talk about it that much, but it is investing in yourself when it comes to more of like your education and you really learning. Like when it comes to, when I say investing, yes, for sure. It's like, it's money, but it's also just your time. Like I spend so much and I'll quickly go through it, but I spend so much and have spent so much of my time listening to podcasts, reading books, taking courses on my days off on my weekends, when I wake up in the morning. So much of my time, my free time or pockets of my time has been put towards educating myself and learning. I am always learning. Like I don't spend my time just wasting my days watching Netflix and watching Real Housewives and all of this reality or watching other people live their lives. And trust me, I used to do it. But I, I realized that, you know, my, my time is better spent investing, meaning learning a topic today. And listen, this is going to take some discipline, right? It's going to take you planning, having a plan. This is another thing is like, you really do need to have a plan, a weekly plan, a monthly plan, a yearly plan. I don't care. Get a freaking journal, get a freaking calendar, go on Google calendars. I do not care, but you need to start putting your time to use. Like I don't even second guess spending money on a course or coaching or therapy or anything, education, like actual schooling, anything. I have definitely spent more money on courses and education than I have on anything else when it comes to clothes, makeup, freaking food. Well, maybe not food. 
or rent. But yeah, I spend a lot of that time. My, honestly, I spend a lot of my time and my money on educating myself and learning. I've spent money on content creator courses, business coaching online. I have done so many courses outside of my actual traditional schooling to help me stay up to date with whether it was like health and wellness or business. And of course, I spent a lot of money on doing therapy, regular talk therapy, somatic therapy. And of course, I have spent hours and hours of hours consuming content that helps me become the best version of myself. And a lot of that stuff is totally free, right? Like there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's whatever. And I have a video that I did and it's, I don't even remember the title, but something about like self, it's it's called self-help for a reason. And then I talk about podcasts. I talk about books. I talk about any courses that I've taken. That was an older video. And I think that I do want to do an updated one, but I'm going to link that in the show notes. If you're interested in some of the people that I've looked up to, this is like, I would say that list was more of like the past three years, I think. Um, so we're not talking like 16, 17, 18, all the, all the way, whatever. But all over the years, I have invested my time to doing these things. And even if we think about like a, a day in a life, a typical day in a life for me goes like this. I wake up in the morning. I make sure to get my mind right. I'm doing my journaling. I'm either listening to a podcast. I'm listening to a YouTuber. I'm listening to music. I'm listening to something that makes me feel the way I want to feel, which is thinking about my goals, working on my future, becoming the best version of myself always. I'm not listening to things that are going to keep me stuck. I'm not listening to people who are complaining. I'm not talking to friends who um, everyone's complaining or I'm scrolling or I'm doing nothing. It is not the morning that we're doing nothing. And that's literally what I do most days. I'm making sure when I do talk to my friends throughout the day, we're talking about things that are positive, things that are lighthearted. Of course, it's not always perfect. Obviously, we talk crap sometimes, but it's like I'm making sure that the stories and the narratives and the things that are happening in my environment are optimistic are positive and that are bringing me closer to where I want to be in my life. Even on Pinterest, I'm making sure I'm consuming things that make me feel good, that inspire me and motivate me, but I'm also very aware of when this no longer is serving me anymore. Always making sure to listen to music that makes me feel good, always talking about topics that are aligned with my audience and also that I'm good at talking about or I really like to talk about. I'm making sure that I'm falling asleep with things that keep my mind right. And honestly, guys, I've just created a life where I do things that just make me feel good, make me feel motivated, make me feel inspired. I'm done with the victim. I don't care about the negative circumstances. That's just not going to get me where I want in my life. If somebody's not showing up the way I want them in my life, if, um, you know, friendship is not working out right now or like an opportunity is not working out, whatever, I address what I need to address, sure. But then I move on. I stop dwelling in the things that I cannot change. And I think the last thing that's helped me over the years versus my old Tumblr days was allowing for imperfections to happen and accepting myself because this is the thing not every single day you're gonna feel motivated to do like great things and think positively there's gonna be things that come up where you're gonna need to emotionally release you're gonna need to sit in that victim mentality for a moment and that's totally fine and also sometimes what happens when you're trying to create a new belief system or a new story new self-concept you're trying to like look at yourself in a more positive way you're trying to just become the best version of yourself you're gonna look around your reality sometimes and be like nothing's working, nothing's changing, everyone's still showing up the same way. Or, you know, you might just be waking up, maybe you're on your freaking period and you're just like not in a good mood, like whatever it is, and you're gonna start to just spiral. Those are the days where you have to just remind yourself that you don't need to feel 100% every single day. It's totally fine. You're not losing progress just because you don't feel like super motivated today, just because you're not seeing change from people in your life or things coming to you or manifestations happening or things happening in your 3D reality doesn't mean things are not working in the background. These are things that I remind myself when I feel like I'm impatient or I feel like things aren't working out for me or I'm getting more into that victim mentality. I tell myself, you know what? It's totally fine. Things will change. Inevitably, things always change. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to you. Nobody is going to tell you that you should change from victim to creator. Nobody's going to be in your mind when you start to witness these negative stories and someone's going to be telling you a new story. It's going to be up to you and it's going to feel difficult sometimes. It's You're not going to be perfect. You, there's going to be so many times where you feel like you're delusional or like, uh, I don't know if this is working or if I shouldn't say this. There's going to be limiting beliefs about, oh, I don't think I can have this, this, that, and the third. And this is when you need to remind yourself you just didn't come here to not live a good life. You just did not come here to not be the best version of yourself. In my opinion, 
this is why you are here. This is why you go through the things that you go through so that you can learn. Hopefully, if you want to look at it like that, you learn from the things that have happened in your life and you grow and you evolve from that and you continue to build off of those things and you get more resilient. And so when things happen in your life, you've gone through something before. You know you have yourself. You can get through it. So I invite you today after listening to this podcast to take one actionable step towards creating a better mental diet for yourself. Are you going to start that journal practice? Are you going to be starting to unsubscribe to the stories that you're telling yourself, aka being aware of the things that you tell yourself everywhere you go? Are you going to start a new course? Are you going to unfollow people that you do not need to be following? Are you going to communicate to your friends and your families that you are no longer persisting in this story anymore? You are no longer being this version of you that you no longer want to be when it comes to your health and your wellness? Are you going to decide to persist in a new story and say, you know what, this is not where I want to be right now, but I'm going to continue to fight for myself because I am deserving of this thing. What is it going to be? Do something today, please. And I said this in my video of your story is keeping you stuck. I said, your future self is waiting for you to decide. And it's like you keep waiting for you to feel confident or for you to be healthy or for you to have all this money or for you to have this dream life or for you to be healed or for you to like feel better. And that's not how it works. You change now, you become the change that you want to see. It doesn't happen the other way around. You don't have the thing come to you first. You decide to change now and watch how everything else around you starts to change. I promise you that. One last thing that I will mention, I am going to be opening my one-on-one coaching Probably in the next week when you hear this, this episode is going out on Thursday. So just be sure to follow me on Instagram, Alicia Gogan. If you're interested in that, I will be posting more details about that. And I'll probably have a highlight as well once I actually post. And my one-on-one coaching is going to be for people who are really looking to up-level their lives, to get out of their own ways, to get out of the stories that they continue to tell themselves and to become the best version of them because you're worth it. We're all worth it. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, make sure that you are following along. Also on Spotify, don't forget to let me know what you thought about this episode, what you wanna hear from me next. Of course, next week, we're gonna be diving into that emotional side of our glow up because that is so important and that has definitely been something that's also transformed myself and the relationship that I have towards myself. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.